I will discuss with you possibility. Islam is not against education. Islam, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, seeking knowledge is a farida. You know what's farida? Salat is a farida. Salat is a farida, obligatory. Seeking knowledge is the same obligatory on male believers and female believers. Islam said that females should be educated as much as males do. But if there are rules to govern our lives and go by, shall we look at those rules as restrictions and signs of backwardness? We seem to have short-term memory. We forget our past when Muslims, when they understand how their roles were divided, when husbands and wives knew exactly what their purpose of life is, things were so great and they were able to produce people like Ibn Sina, people like Al Razi, people like Al Khawarizmi, people like Al Bukhari, people like Al Tirmidhi, people like Ibn Majah. Nowadays, how many Bukharis we have? How many Tirmidhis? How many? Shafi'is, how many Abu Hanifas we have? You know why? Because we allowed the rug to be slipped and taken from underneath our feet. And we followed, as Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, that a time will come when you will follow non Muslims, even if they go into a cave of an animal, you will follow them blindly. Whatever they do, we will do it. Without questioning, they are civilized. We are what they call us third world countries, underdeveloped. Look at this. Look to this. Under, we are underdeveloped. They are developed countries. Why? Because their measure or the stick they use is financial gain. Nothing else. You are as good as your bank account. That's why we find our sisters and our brothers married. And their objective is we've got to make as much as possible. Let's seek opportunity. Let's make more. That's why the sisters go out on the expense of the children, producing a generation which is raised by television. Have you ever checked the kind of programming we have between 4 and 7 o'clock in the evening? What do they have on television? The kind of setcoms they have on television between 4 and 7. The kind of television that Muslim mothers are putting their children in front of what do you expect fathers and mothers come crying to me and they said brother please do something please i will tell you a story about a brother in london ontario who does not miss a single prayer without being with the jama'ah at the masjid not a single prayer and once he called me and he was crying. I said, what's the matter? He said, you won't believe what happened to me. I said, what happened? He said, you know my daughter so-and-so? I said, yes. He said, I just received a phone call from her inviting my wife and myself to her wedding. And I never knew that she was about to get married. Imagine, brothers and sisters, your own daughter or your own son just call you at the end when all the plans are finalized. Say, Dad, Mom, I'd like you to be present at my wedding. You never knew about it. You had no participation in the selection process. Nowadays, they say, oh, did you hear? I said, what? You see, today, today, we were at one of the malls in Fort Lauderdale and there was a German woman and she saw my wife with the hijab and she said to her, oh, you know, are you a Muslim? She said, yes, she said, I know we attended a wedding of a Palestinian girl 
whose parents selected her husband for her. She didn't want that to happen. Poor girl, she was so upset she was ready to run away on the wedding night. But then she paused a little bit and she said, do you know what? Now she is so happy and she is very pleased with the selection of her parents and this and that. And I said to myself, well, how did my parents get married? How did most parents get married, our parents, nowadays, now in Kuwait? Kuwait, a small Muslim country. You know what's the rate of divorce? 29%. Kuwait, not the state of Florida or, or in Canada and Ontario. Kuwait, 29%, which means that out of every 100 marriages, 29 end in divorce. Why? Because we are not following the Quran and the Sunnah. As I said today, they start the wedding day with belly dancers and with, with music parties and breaking the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they expect the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come to them. How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless a marriage that started by breaking his rules? How? You know why? Imitation. We'd like to imitate others. Well, my cousin had uh, such and such uh, singer at her wedding. I'd like to get a better one. We have our own tradition of celebrating weddings. Islamic way of celebrating weddings. What happened to it? How many follow that tradition now? So brothers and sisters, I don't want to take much. I already took one hour. And I would like, if allowed, to leave some time for questions and answers, if you would allow it. But I would like to end by this.